is our high priest today? Well, we looked at it first on the first screen there, but Hebrews 4, verse 14 says, don't you read that way? Uh, seeing we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. We do not need... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can read that. Uh, we do not need an earthly priest to make an atonement for our sins. Jesus is now our high priest. And now we have New Testament believers are in him. And Jesus continually makes intercession for us. So according to that there... Our high priest is also passed into heaven. Well, what, what, what's going on in heaven? What's going on in heaven can't be touched from things on earth, can it? So, so we have an assurance now that we can hold fast. That word, hold fast our profession, one of the translations says, hold fast our confession. So who are we confessing? We're confessing that Jesus is our high priest today. So he has gone into the Holy of Holies once and for all, for all times and for all peoples, once and for all, all right? The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus isn't, we're not careful, we can we get a theology where we need to be having our, a Catholic theology in, in the sense that we need to have our sins re, re-dealt with over and over and over and over again. No, we have to confess that Jesus is our high priest passed into heaven, which cannot be touched, okay? So now we can have that confidence that we're under the priestly blessing, not the, not the Aaronic priestly blessing, but the blessing of Jesus as our high priest. Amen. And everything changed with Jesus. And just before we move on, uh, this um, blessing was just spoken to Aaron and to his sons, but now we're blessed in Jesus, so this applies to everybody. But this says, the Lord bless you and keep you. And people are saying this prayer out. But really now, because uh, we've received Jesus, we can read it differently because we're already blessed. So now we can read it, the Lord has blessed you and he has kept you. It it says, the Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious. But now we can read it, the Lord has made his face shine upon us and he has been gracious to us. So it's all past tense the lord lift up your countenance upon you but now he has lifted up his countenance and it says this prayer says the lord give you peace but we know now we've already been given peace so we can uh, still use this prayer but just proclaim it over ourselves now that we've already been given all these things and they shall put your name upon your children in israel and i will bless you but we know from reading the psalm 118 it says the lord through Jesus, has already blessed us. Mm. So we can't be saying, oh, Lord, bless us and bless our family because we already are blessed in in Jesus. That's where it's good news. We're not trying to get it. We're already in a position where we are blessed. And now it's up to us to take responsibility to walk in those blessings that's already been purchased for us. Okay. Have we read that one? No. No, we haven't read that one yet. So 1 John 5.20, it's on there, Wendy, but if you want to read it. 1 John. 1 John. 1 John 5, verse 20. I'm surprised you can see what's written in there, Wendy. You've got that much on the pages. And we know that we are of God and the whole world. Is that the one right? No. 1 John 5, verse 20. Is that right? Well, anyway, it says, we can read it on there. Yeah. We know that the Son of God has come and has, and has given us an understanding. We're knowing that it's true and we are in Him. This is the point I want to reiterate. You see, when, when, our, when people are. You know, enter into Ramadan and enter into r- rituals and ordinances of religion. They're not in him. The trust is not in him. The trust is in their religion. The trust is in their acts and their deeds and what, what they can do. And that is true. Even in some Jesus, this is the true God in the eternal life. See, our right standing with God today is not just based on the fact that we have a high priest who is passed into heaven, but he lives in us. 
He lives in us. It says there, we are in him. Now, the problem with that is we look in the mirror and we sometimes go, ah, no, that's not true, you know, because we, we know ourselves and we know, we know what we're capable of. We know our thought and our mind and, our, and, and where we're at. So we look in the mirror and we think, really, me, having Jesus in me, having, having the King of Kings, you know, I, I, if you knew what I think. And, but you see, you've got to remember, we're in him spiritually. We're sealed spiritually. Our flesh is, Jesus isn't in our flesh. If he is, we won't stop at traffic lights and wind the window down and, and say happy, happy birthday or whatever to people. <laughs> Yeah. I had a guy recently, I think I told you, I accidentally cut him up in town and we're not, we're not been in town for a long while. And this guy got out his car and got in my car, oh. opened my door, started to try and hit me and everything. And I, and I thought, you know what, I ought to just drive off and drag him along the road for a little <laughs> while, you know, and shut the door on him, you know. But anyway, I didn't. I responded in the right way. I just went... What's your problem, mate? I said, I'm in the wrong lane. Don't get over it. It's not a deal. And then he, off he went and shut. You see, that's the flesh. But that's Jesus in, in, in that part of us. He's in, we're in him spiritually, aren't we? We've been born again of, a, of an incorruptible seed, spiritually. Our flesh will still get in the way. Our flesh will still behave like that. And so Wendy came up with this uh, the other day as well. So... Um, I heard Andrew Wormack, um, I haven't watched him for a little while, and then when you watch him, you realise how much he helps you. Uh, and he said that God is more willing to bless you than you want to be blessed. So, you know, just relax, because he's wanting to chase down the blessings, and the blessings are wanting to chase you. But um, uh, we do, uh, don't give to be blessed, but then we're not to resist the blessings. And we should be receiving them because the blessings are chasing should be chasing after us mm. and then the blessings when god pours them upon us it shows how good god is to other people to ourselves and other people around us so we should never ever resist um you know the blessings because he wants to bless you and your family more than you will ever want it yeah he wants to make our cups overflow definitely so, amen. yeah definitely it is amen. More than we can unlearn, yeah amen. yeah so don't resist it. And when, when we're in overflow mode, guess what? People benefit. Yeah. You know? If, if we was a water meter, if it was water hydrant in the street that was open and overflowing into the streets, guess what? Everybody, benefit, the water company yeah. wouldn't be benefit from it because people, people would be better. So God wants us to just... Well, then we get this area whereby people get all religious and go, oh, well, you know, we should be this... And it's like a humility point of view, and there's a there's a place for humility, you know, that's fine. But to deny that Jesus has blessed us yeah. to be a blessing, that's the that's the deal. Okay, so so we know. Is it on there? Yeah. Do you want to read that one? Because you're on yeah. Zoom quite a lot, and you. So Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich for our sakes, he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. So you see... I think somebody, um, I, I think I mentioned something like this on Facebook, and then one of our friends, who's always trying to challenge us, he said, um, well, that's all right for you, but what about all the people who uh, haven't got anything? And they're suffering. I says, well, it's up to us. You know, there's enough to go around the world. It's up to us to all <coughs> join together and help the ones and lift the ones up who haven't got anything. So uh, there's enough to go around the world. So it's not like God's chosen so many people to have and to not. It's just that sometimes people or countries keep more than what's um, what's needed you know, for their own for their own gains. Yeah. Well, take for example what's going on in Russia at the moment, Putin. I read somewhere, Elon Musk is the wealthiest guy on the planet, he's the Tesla guy. And I forget what the figures was, 260 billion I think he's worth. Putin's got way more than him. Well, how's he got all that? Well, he ain't got it from collecting Green Shield stamps, I do know. <laughs> he's got it from corruption, and he's got it from oppressing the people. You see, there's plenty, this planet, as I spoke the other week about, he has no oxygen brought into it. Yeah. He has no water brought into it. 
It has no chemicals brought into it, no gold or silver that's not already there, no lithium. Guess what? Lithium was there however many years ago. So we could have had battery powered whatever, fossil fuels. They're all there. They're all there. And the world's got enough finances in it. It's got enough prosperity in it. Sure, there's areas that are droughts and stuff. You know, we don't doubt that. But guess what? We've got the solutions. We, we can build canals and pipe water over the Sahara Desert to, to villages and things like that. If we have the Kachin, if we have the Wonga, if we have the Akas for it. So the wealth is in, in there. But a few people, have, I, I read somewhere that 4% of the whole of the world's population, 96% uh, of the world's population is held with 4% of people. I don't know how true that is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere along them regions. Um, so, so we know that Jesus has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in high places. But our, our mandate is to allow that blessing that's in us to flow to other people so that they can see the love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart. So how do we do this? So, so we don't give to be blessed. We give because we are blessed. Yeah. And... Um, I'm going to give you an example in a little minute. Oh, sorry, it's on there. So Luke 17, Wendy. We we're going to do that, aren't we? Where was that in the thing? Maybe that was a... Oh, I added that to it. Luke 17, 21, yeah. Because I just wanted us to know that to get this, com to get this confidence that, that the kingdom is within us. If the kingdom's within us, then it's not, it's not difficult to walk in the blessings of God. If we understand that we're kingdom people. You see, if you went to see the Sultan of Brunei, who's worth zillions anyway, he knows who he is. He knows he's the Sultan of Brunei. And everybody knows. It's like the Queen. If we were to go meet the Queen, she knows who she is, doesn't she? Yeah. She knows she's the most powerful person probably on the planet still you know we still have empires we still have areas that were that were commonwealth but she knows she knows her authority she knows her sovereignty she knows who she is and so we need to know that the kingdom of god is within us so uh, luke 17 21 i did add that one to it really. neither shall they say lo here or lo there for behold the kingdom of god is within you amen it doesn't say it will be or there's a good chance it said it is within you. So today then, to conclude, that's the priestly blessing for us today, that we have a high priest. We don't have to have, you know, um, a where we deny ourselves. And I read this about, on, well, it's on Wikipedia, so it's, it's open for everybody to look at, that, that Ramadan is, is what the Muslims celebrate. And I found this amazing. Um, it's, it's for one lunar month. And it's always a crescent lunar month. That's where the Muslim flags are often got a crescent on them, haven't they? 29 days to 31 days. It depends on which lunar cycle it is. And so they're, 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 they're by, by law, <laughs> by their legal religious law, they have to abstain from food and drink from sunrise to sundown. And... The, the bit I read, it said this, it said that they will abstain from um, sexual things, sexual relations, tobacco, and sinful behaviour. So just for 29 days of the year, they abstain from smoking and sinful behaviour. And, and I'm like, what? And then after the 29 days, you just do exactly as you want and live exactly as you want. And so... You see, that's what rules is. That's what's putting rules on things. But we, we can have the freedom of knowing the kingdom of God is within us wherever we go. And I'm going to use this testimony because um, we sometimes think that notice. Does anybody think that they go unnoticed sometimes? So that nobody that really. An effect? We're not really. Yeah. You know, we meet here and we've got a few people and we... We do our things online, and people, Joyce does their things. We get a few people, Emily does her, we get people looking at them. But, you know, I always think to myself sometimes, people not really. Do they know a lot about us? Do they really? Are we, are we influencers? You know, are we, are we 
um, this, that, and the other. Anyway, so the other night we'd, we'd moved into an apartment just round the back of People's Park, and Wendy was busy doing something. Cooking tea. Cooking tea, <laughs> of course, of course. Like I never cook tea. <laughs> So I thought, I'll go for a walk round the People's Park. It's a nice evening. Some people may have seen a photograph I put on Facebook. That was the evening when I went for this walk. Oh, it was nice, that picture. Mm. Anyway, I'm walking. So I'm 60 year old and there's kids in the park. So guess what? I've got wisdom, etc. But anyway, these young kids, a bit 12 year old, 14 year old, about seven or eight of them, they're playing around, goofing, fishing stuff out. You know how they are, kids nearly falling in, all the rest of it. Picking out shopping trolleys and whatever else are in the park nowadays. And so I walked by and they, and they, they let me pass through and that. And this young kid about Dylan's age, he, he follows me and comes after me with these two girls. And so they're only about 14, something like that. And this young boy like Dylan, he goes to me, are you famous? And I went, well, it depends who wants to know really, I suppose. <laughs> And he went, you're on TikTok. He said, I've seen you on TikTok. I, I really, what, with my Spider-Man slippers on? No, it's not going to happen. So anyway, I said, anyway, with that, these two girls, I, I said, no, I'm, I'm not on TikTok. And I, I said, you know. and so I went walking off and these, these two girls followed me. And one of them said to me, excuse me, mister. She said, I've never seen you before. She said, she said, but do you work for the church? And I said, well, actually, I do. And I said, and I was able to just say what we did and where we was. And, but I'm wise, okay. So there's two 14-year-old girls in the park with a six-year-old. So I said, I left it there and walked off. So there's a time to minister the gospel to people. And there's time to also watch out what you're doing. So I've learned over the years the wisdom of things like that. But here's the point I want to say. How did she know that I worked for the church? Yeah. How? I've never met her in my life. It's because the kingdom of God is within us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The kingdom of God is within us and, and it works. It'll work um, because it's a priestly blessing that, that, that we have and that we walk in. And I, I use this with Wendy. Wendy shines like a beacon. And people, I don't know, wherever we go, Wendy just went to pick something up from a girl the other day and the girl's coming to church next week next and Sunday, yeah. talk to her about healing. The girl's not very well. This girl gave Wendy all this. Wendy come back with all these gifts and that. <laughs> and I'm like Kevin, I'm thinking this is going to cost me a few. <laughs> but the girl basically gave her, gave her loads of things. And, and, and when you say, no, oh, she gave me these because they don't fit her anymore. And these and we're operating under a priestly blessing. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And we just need to understand it and believe it and, and walk in that position. See, we don't have to do 29 days of fasting. and Fasting's good for you. And we're not an anti-fasting church. We, we do teach on fasting. We do encourage people to fast. But fasting just gets the flesh out of the way. All right? That's what the reason. We don't fast so that... So that Mohammed and Allah and whatever the, the, the Muslims believe that they get some that they get some brownie points for it, which is why they do it. They do it to get acceptance. Listen, we've been accepted in the beloved. We've been accepted because of the person of Jesus. So do you want to add anything to that, Wendy? I uh, think just to finish off with this uh, prayer. Because, and we'll change um, it and put people into it. Yeah, yeah, that um, we've already been blessed. And this prayer was not only uh, for Aaron and his sons, but it's for all, my, all mankind. Um, so I'll declare this over everybody here and people watching, not only for us, but for our families as well. The Lord has blessed you and he will keep you. The Lord has made his face to shine upon you and he has been gracious unto you. The Lord has lifted up his countenance upon you and he has given you peace. And he has put his name upon his children of Israel, and he has blessed them. Amen. Amen. So that's a good place to end. And Sue's going to come up and we're going to do communion today. So.